morning, First Conyers. Hope y'all are doing well. Happy Thursday to you. It is June, I believe it is June 10th on this fabulous Thursday in 2021. And I hope y'all are doing well. Uh, we are in Ephesians 4, 17 today. And I um, want to just welcome you to uh, Daily in the Word this morning. So we're going to... Um, going to sing a little bit and hop into his word. We're opening up us with prayer this morning. God, I'm just so thankful for your goodness and your grace. God, I pray, Lord, you just uh, meet with us this morning as we uh, lift you up, as we worship you, as we exalt your name. God, I pray, Lord, that your word would just permeate and speak through us, God, that you would just, um, God, help us to understand your word fully and to know you better. God, we love you in Jesus' name. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come wounded to be filled. I come pardoned by the blood of Christ. And I welcome you with open arms, praise God, just as I am. Just as I am, I would be lost, but My freedom more and now to glory in your cross, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, and I come. To be mended, I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I welcome you with open arms. Praise God, just as I am. Amen. Amen. I uh, hope you're doing well on this, um, again, on this Thursday morning in June. We are going to be in Ephesians today, and uh, I love that song. I love Travis Cottrell, he rearranged that song with that chorus. I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. And I come, I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcome with open arms. Praise God, just as I am. What a beautiful chorus this morning. Uh, we have been in Ephesians this week and just looking through uh, unity in the body and in the spirit um, with 
This is verse 2, with all humility and gentleness and patience. That's been kind of my theme this week as I've been thinking about my actions towards others and my um, diligence to interact with them. Am I extending grace enough to them? Um, there's one body and one spirit. That's in verse 4. One calling, one baptism. Just Paul is speaking unity. Yesterday we kind of wrapped that up in verse 16. Well, really, verses 14 and through 16 uh, and 14. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried by our every wind of doctrine. Uh, that was such a theme of my mind yesterday as I was thinking about there's so many truths that other people have and are trying to push as their agenda, but there is not there's not many truths. There are There's one truth and that we, we trust and know that. And Paul's encouraging us here not to be stirred by those other truths that we can um, that we can that we could allow to tangle us and to distort our view of the one true truth, and that's so encouraging uh, from Paul. And then we pick up also, and then it ends with from yesterday uh, by every joint has its place every. Every part of the body has its place and every one has an important role to play. And then when today we pick up in verse 17 and this um, the title of above my in my little Bible uh, that's breaking up the chapter. It says the Christian walk. And I was we were just going to go to 20, but really I'm cutting it off probably too short. So we're going to go down to 24 today and hop in and this is going to be good. So this is Ephesians 4, verse 17. So this I say, and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the purpose and practice of every kind of impurity, with greediness, but you did not learn Christ in this way. This is Paul interjecting, but you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. Let me read that again. That's a that's a that's a mouthful. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, we're talking about one truth, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you may be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. So I'm glad that we read a little further because um, we would have been that well I left you on a cliffhanger if we just stopped in 20. Uh, that in this is verse 22 that in reference to your former manner of life, many of you we've heard that so many times the old way of things, the old way of life before we were changed. Uh, I remember being saved as a young boy. I'm thankful um, that I was, but I remember even as a as a young boy being changed. When when Christ changed changes you, you die to self. Your old ways are gone. You completely die, and you you're born totally again. Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that that you have died to all those sins as in you're not going to do those sins anymore unfortunately because we still struggle with lust of the flesh we still struggle with our daily thought thought life thought patterns uh, and Paul's here is reminding us to be renewed by our minds and to put aside our old life and to remind ourselves this isn't who we are anymore we're not like the Gentiles once were uh, in that day and age we, we have been set apart and been changed. And uh, this past Sunday, Pastor talked about sins and how sins, past sins, 
can come back to haunt us as they came back and haunted Abraham. Something that we maybe even thought that we were over, but uh, some of our past sins have a way of creeping up in uh, behind us. And what are ways that we can navigate and say, I'm putting that life behind me and I'm looking forward to the life that I now have. And we, uh, pastor's probably going to continue to to hop into verses 25 and on uh, next week. But, but you did not learn Christ in this way. I think that's the most important. We didn't learn Christ in reference to to the sin that entangles us. We, we've we been born again. We've been bought with a price. It doesn't mean that it's always an easy road to walk, but we, we are, we are on this journey, you know, and I also say this, this is a side note. I used to think that I was in a destination. I'm going here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to be successful in this. Then I'm going to go to this place and I'm going to be successful. And I was a destination person rather than a journey person. And I think that if we look to the destination and we miss the journey, we miss the life change. We miss, we miss the parts of our life where we're being sanctified by the renewing of, of our minds and the renewing of our spirits. We've died to self for those of us that have believed in him as we're walking on this journey. The ups and downs, they're part of the journey to becoming sanctified in him and encouraged. So I, I wanted to encourage you in that. Uh, I'm kind of leaving you on a, uh, you know, in the middle of a chapter, and I hate to do that, but um, it's a little too much for us to to tackle at 8:12 in the morning on Thursday. But we've we've tackled so much this week, and I hope that you've been encouraged by uh, Ephesians 4 as we're walking through Ephesians in the New Testament. Uh, but God has been so good and so faithful to me, and I hope that as you're on your journey, um, that there would be even instances today where you can say, no, nope, that's, that's a part of my old life. That's, uh, that's, I'm, I'm no longer, I'm no longer bound to those things. I, I might, I'm no longer a sinner. I might still sin, but I've been bought with a price. I don't, I'll no longer identify with my old life. I put that behind me and I hope that encourages you this morning. Um, I just ask that you continue to pray, um, for, um, our church family as we grow and we're getting back in the swing of things really I mean we've been in the swing of things for a while but I continue to see more faces uh, on Sunday even as COVID is it's trickling off and we're seeing more people come back and um, I encourage you if you haven't been back to come back uh, the Spirit of the Lord is with us he is our focus he's our theme um, we we're not doing anything but lifting up his name. And it's good for the body to be together. So I'd encourage you to come. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, hope you have some fun. A uh, couple of reminders as we go into the weekend. Next week on July 20th, we are having a picnic on the grounds. And we're going to have hot dogs and hamburgers. And we're going to have some live music that night in the sanctuary following our picnic. Um, and we're asking that, I believe we're asking people to bring sides. Uh, so Bobby Norton is doing the, um, doing the grilling and he's got a great grill and he's a great, um, great cook. So we're going to have him doing that. And, uh, you don't want to miss that on Father's Day. But, yeah, bring your father, bring your grandfather, come celebrate with us. And then we'll have a bluegrass concert, uh, that evening. And it's going to be awesome. Uh, super excited about that. We've been preparing and getting ready for that. So I want to invite you to that, and um, thank y'all for letting me be with you this week. I'm going to pray, and I will see y'all on Sunday. Lord, we're so thankful and grateful for your instruction. God, may we not heed your instruction. May we have ears to hear. May you renew our minds in such a way that we hear the words that you have for us. God, you did not instruct us through the, the wisdom of the world. You instructed us through we have greater knowledge because of what you have spoken not because of anything we've done but we have we have this this secret 
knowledge of truth that we have access to that God I pray Lord that you would just help us to share it it's not something that we need to hold to ourselves God we've been born again we've been bought with a price God our old life we've taken on a new life we have freedom in you and God I thank you for this instruction in, in Ephesians God may you bless each person that's watching for those that are hurting God I pray for them I pray, Lord, you'd bless their hearts, that you'd encourage their minds, renew their spirit, that they'd be encouraged in you. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we're grateful for your goodness. God, may you continue to guide this church. May you have your will. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Thursday. Y'all have a wonderful week.